That's another thing I want to get to, because, like, okay, so one thing that I hate seeing is, um, say, a white first world feminist, who's a female, get up and say, I'm fighting for women. And it's like, you are a woman. You're fighting for your own self-interest. You can claim to be fighting for someone else's self-interest, but at the end of the day, it is definitely your own self-interest as well. Yes. So don't lie to me and tell yes. me you're fighting for someone you can't even name. Just, just to make you say, I want this. Yes. Then we're having an honest conversation. And I can say, well, I don't want you to have that. And I yeah. can tell you why, because you want to take something from me you yes. don't have the right to have, or whatever it is. You know. But then, then we're having an honest conversation. But until we can get them to, and, and this is, this is I'm, I'm going to write a thing about bourgeois morality, because I've, <laughs> I've started to really despise bourgeois morality. I'm not sure what bourgeois morality is. It's uh, well, kind of a... It, it's, it's, a, it's a complex social yes, construct yes. that bears very little relation to reality right now. Or to morality, yes. Or, I think or, or, right. Yeah, morality yeah. or reality. Yeah. But it's, it's very interesting. Like, you know when a, a terrorist attack happens, say in yeah. France, and then you get people in England putting French flags on their yes. profile pictures. Yes. You, you can go through their profile and you can see they don't know a single French person. No. Not one person in France has seen this. So why did they do this? Well, what offends me more <laughs> is when people after, for example, uh, Charlie Hebdo, mm -hmm put up uh, Je suis Charlie Hebdo, right? Yeah. And, 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 but they wouldn't put up the cartoon. Yeah. So my view is, I, I'm all for being Charlie yeah. Hebdo, but then oh, show yeah. the cartoons, oh, yeah. right? Have big posters of the cartoons, yeah. wave flags of the cartoons, yeah. put it up on your Facebook profile, yeah. put it up on your, on your website, so then you have the right to call yourself Je suis yeah. Charlie Hebdo. But if you're saying that, and then you're saying, but you know, they maybe went over a little bit too yeah, far, and we don't want to offend you. Muslims, and we don't oh, want to do this. Yeah then you're, yeah. you're not worthy of, of being called just we. So that really drives me nuts. If, if you say, I am X, live up to the X. Well, that's, that's exactly what I'm saying about border morality, yeah. morality. Because what it is, it's a, it's a fiction. It's a, yes. it's a pretension. that they you Because know, like when, when no French person sees your French flag, why did you put it up? Yes. You put it up so your friends can see, so guess, oh, you care. I guess this is what they what people call mm. virtue signaling. That's exactly yes. what it is. It's, yes. and Rousseau actually, like, Marx has kind of like stolen the concept of the bourgeoisie from Rousseau. Yeah. It's a real shame because yeah. Rousseau really defined it in like social terms. Yeah. And I've been looking into this really deeply recently because there's something, I've found a thread and I know that if I keep pulling it, I'm one day going to be really offending the middle class, which is fine. I like offending the middle class. Well, again, I, I mean, my my view and my view is you got to be careful accepting Marxist terms or Rousseau's terms. Oh, yeah. there is no such thing as the middle class. There's me and you yeah. and, and individuals, and so I, I often say I don't care about the poor, I don't care about the middle class, no. I don't care about the rich. What I care about is productive individuals, whether they have opportunities in life to advance their fullest potential. I, that's what I. And you know what? If you're if you're if you're a wife beating drunk poor person, I don't care about you. But if you're a white beating drunk rich person, I don't care about you either. Yeah. It's not where you are in the socioeconomic whatever. It's it's who are you as an individual? Are you a yeah. good person or a bad person? And this also relates to this anti-collectivism. I mean, why are we lumping people in to these tribes and these groups when they're completely different people? What I care about is virtue. What I care about is goodness, is good people. And, and what they believe in, and, and what kind of lives they live. Now that, that's a really, oh, that's a great point to bring up actually, because one, one thing that people, I, I am completely Aristotelian in this, I think virtue is done by action. Yes. So I, I don't even care what you really believe. If, or if, what you say. What, yeah, what you say, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly, what, yeah. Yeah, what you say, because if you're not living up to it, and this, this is why I hate the bourgeois morality, because like with the, the example of the yep. French flags, okay, Nothing's changed. Yep. You've you've helped not one person yep. in France. You've yep. not prevented another terrorist yep. attack. You've not you've not even you know you've not even made you know shown sympathy to someone. Yep. It's it's all fiction. It's all pretense. Through your action, you have done nothing, and you have no claim to be a better person than anyone else. Because really, what you're doing is kind of trying to grab on to someone else's yes. morality. You know, you're trying to you're trying to steal some of that glory. Yeah, I mean, you, you and, and this is right. I mean, I mean, often called this kind of the second hand of principle. It's the idea that, that you're getting, <clears throat> your values you're getting, you get from other people. Mm -hmm. So it's cool to post the French flag, so you put it up, not because you believe in anything, not because it, it yeah. really represents your views in any substantial mm -hmm. way, but because that's the thing to do. Yeah. And it's completely second-handed, you're getting it from your friends, your society, from what you think other people will value. And it's all about projecting to other people. Yeah. And, and, and again, Rand is all about what is really good for me? Yeah. Really good for me. And sometimes that'll be the same as what's other people. Sometimes it'll be completely different. Mm -hmm. And it's about being 
independent and being independent is not being counter to other people because you know so like the the hippies who who uh, you know who wear you know you wear torn jeans because everybody else wears ordinary jeans and everybody now wears torn jeans but that's just being a collectivist just in reverse you're doing the opposite no what do I really want to wear what do, what do I think I look good in or what, what do I think is so being truly independent is really thinking through what is good for me independent of what society thinks independent of what my friends think independent of what they'll think of me yeah now, now th this is great actually because this this and I, I keep bringing back to the boardroom morality but yeah. I, I really think yeah. this is it's it's like a, a blob that sits on top of society <laughs> right and Rousseau would have called you a savage you know because yes. he's saying because what you're describing there is living within yourself well yes yeah. but you see his definition of living within yourself and my definition of living within yourself is completely different oh okay what's, what's yours well, he would say his definition of living within yourself is basically pure emotion. It's 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 right, it's, okay. it's an emo. You know, you're running around nature naked and having you know and 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 and, and participating in in sexual activity because sure. you have an urge to do yeah. so. Right? It's it's really <coughs> primitive in a sense of man before. In some ways, it's man before he became self-conscious. It's man qua animal, and that's what Rousseau views as the ideal. And, and I think that's incredibly instructive. So I think Rousseau yeah. is one of the bad guys in history. So, to me, it's 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 again reason. It's it's figuring out. It's using my own mind and my own rationality to figure out what a value. So, yeah. and, and at the end of the day, one of the reasons I, in a sense, I love the middle class and the bourgeois, if you will, is because these are people who've actually done that. They don't acknowledge it. They don't understand it. But to be middle class means you've taken your life seriously to some extent. You've worked hard. You've made you've made a certain standard of living. Mm -hmm. You've uh, you, you've achieved something in mm -hmm. your life. Not not the level of uh, Steve Jobs in that, sure. but but something in yeah. your life. You've 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 applied yourself. And it, to me, it's tragic then that they then get they they get get squished by this blob of secondhand of this collectivism Absolutely. and and. And just mm -hmm. self-negation, what they're doing is really destroying mm -hmm. what it is that made them good in the first place. So I totally agree. So, and th this is this is what I mean. When, <clears throat> like I wasn't I wasn't um, I wasn't trying to. Call I know. Yeah, I know. Because I agree, Rousseau yeah. certainly has his problems. Yeah. But he had some great observations, and like I th I think the key is trying to get people to live within themselves to get say, look, it doesn't matter what that yes. person thinks of your shirt. It, yes. it just doesn't matter, yes. you know. It, what do you think of your show? You know, yes, that, that and living within yourself, I think. And what do you think? Yeah, think yeah. Yeah. is is the think? key. Yeah. And 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 I think one of the problems we have as a society is we've we've become, and this is particularly true of kids on campuses today. Oh yeah, we've become enamored by emotions. Oh, yeah. So while I love emotions, I mean, I'm a passionate guy, and 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 and, uh, and, and you experience life through your emotions. And ideally, your emotions are integrated with your thinking so that they're consistent. Uh, but sometimes they deviate. And the question is, what's important? And what's important is cognition. What's important is thinking. Because ultimately, emotions are consequences of past thinking. And sometimes of mistaken thinking. So, for example, right, you fall in love with somebody based on, I think, shared values and shared whatever. Then you learn new facts about the person. Mm -hmm. What happens? Your emotions change. Yeah. So your emotions change because you've integrated those thinking and said, oh, they're not the kind of person I thought they were. Sometimes, often actually, what happens is your emotions actually lag your thinking. So you have come to the conclusion, this person's not as good as I thought. Yeah. But it's hard to get away because you're still, you're still emotionally connected. Yeah. But the emotions ultimately will catch up with you. So emotions are <coughs> consequence of thinking, good or bad, because they're consequence of subconscious integrations. And it, we get enamored by our emotions, but and young people today in schools mm. are trained to emote. Yeah. They're trained to feel. When you put six-year-olds down and you ask them what they think of transgender people, they don't know what sex is. They don't know what gender is. They don't know what life is. They don't know anything about anything, right? Six-year-olds, so all they can do is emote based on stuff that they've heard, and, you're, you're, and you're, you're validating that. You're validating the idea that what's really valuable. Now, put aside transgender. Ask them what they think about politics, what they think about anything. <laughs> yeah. They just don't know. The whole yeah. purpose of being six is to learn. 
You know, until you're about 13, 14, 15, you're not capable. Your frontal cortex is not developed enough to actually think about anything. You don't have enough knowledge of the world anyway. You can't make an informed decision. So what we're doing to what we're doing today with these kids is we're letting them do whatever the hell they want, which means whatever their emotions dictate, and we're saying their emotions are valid and 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 whatever the emotion is, and we're, we're celebrating emotionalism. So when these kids get to college, and somebody says something offensive to them, and they get offended then I can understand them going, this is the end of my world. You can't do this because yeah. that's what they've been trained to do instead of what education should be about. It's training the mind, yeah. training us to think, T training us to think, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, really think through problems. This is why every kid should learn math. You know, kids say, well, what do I need calculus? I'll never use it in life. You'll use it in the sense that calculus teaches you how to be a disciplined thinker. The, 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 the actual activity of calculus you'll never do in your life, but it's training you to do something really, really, really important. But, but we now denigrate all that. We, we, we don't think any of that is important. Critical thinking is what school is for. And well, it, it should be what yes, school is for. Yes. That's, now we're actually, socializing kids. Yeah. It, it's about socialization and emotional training. And then colleges now become a catering to that. Yes. So now when they go to college, they don't learn to think either. Yep. So we're getting young adults who've never been actually trained to think, and we call you know they're being called snowflakes, because because it's an they expression are. of their emotion. Yeah, 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 it's really interesting as well. Like um, <clears throat> I I can never understand. Like for, for I I really enjoy stoicism. I really enjoy doing it. I mean, like a lot of the time, it went too far. You yeah, know, yeah. you're there being tortured, yeah. and you're meant to take responsibility yeah. for being tortured. It's, yeah. You know, it goes too far. Sometimes. Yes, but I, I like the underlying principle. It's like wherever possible, you take responsibility for what Absolutely. happens to you, because then you will know. You know, you you know why that happened. You know what decisions you made, and you are the one who has to deal with it. And it makes you stronger. It makes you tough. It makes you, it, it makes you unable to be offended. You know, and. It seems to be inculcating weakness. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if somebody says something to me, a communist says something yeah. to me about communism or whatever, I mean, there are really two options. They're either right or they're wrong. Sure. Right? If they're right... Let's assume they're wrong. Well, let's start with they're right. Right? Let's assume yeah. it wasn't a communist. Let's assume it's somebody. <laughs> right? And they come to me and they say, you're wrong. you're wrong about this. This is what it's really like. And if it turns out they're right, I should thank them. Yes. Right? If they're wrong, why should I care? It's their problem that they're wrong, not my problem that they're wrong. So I don't get offended by people, even you know, people calling me names and everything else, because they're wrong. It's their problem. Yep. Their lives are screwed up because they're wrong. I believe that if you're right, it enhances life. So it's not relevant to me either way, right? So a whole attitude towards knowledge is, if somebody says something that's that's critical of what I'm saying, but he's right, cool. Mm. I just learned something new. How yeah. cool is that? And if it's wrong, it's their problem. Again, it's about, as you said, it's about taking responsibility for yourself. Mm -hmm. You're not responsible for other people's thinking. Mm -hmm. So if somebody else is wrong, it's not my responsibility. I'm not going to be offended by it. And 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 learning from your mistakes, uh, and and that makes you a better person. It makes you a better thinker. Therefore, a better human being, more capable of living. Yeah. And